This is Wingspan Asia. This is the newest expansion for Wingspan from Stonemeyer Games and Elizabeth Hargrave. Many of you may not know, though, that this is a standalone game. That's right, you could purchase this game and use it solely by itself to play either solo or two player using their new duet mode. Um, also, this expansion gives you the ability to play with up to six to seven players. So there's a lot going on in this box. Let's take a look at what this adds to Wingspan. Here is Wingspan Asia you know, set up and most of the way through a uh, solo game against the Automa. I just wanted to kind of show you guys that Wingspan Asia offers you everything you need to play Wingspan. Uh, the only things that are not, that you're not going to find in this version of Wingspan that you would find in uh, other expansions or the base game are the Nectar Tokens, which are essentially wild food tokens and uh, traditional end of round goals. So the only end of round goals that come in the Asia expansion, standalone expansion, are the duet mode um, end of round goals. Now, the trick is, is that if you wanted to play with more than two people, you would obviously need the base box. But if you are only ever going to play Wingspan solo or with two players, this is a perfectly viable option to play Wingspan. Now there are a few things that they did not include in Wingspan Asia to keep it in a kind of standard expansion size box. There is no birdhouse uh, dice tower. So you're simply rolling out these dice and then keeping them on this board here <clears throat> to signify that they're in the bird feeder and then you just move them out like so. There's no fancy card tray or card holder for the cards. They do give you this board, which holds them, um, but it works. There's a decent deck of cards here of birds. These are all Asia birds. Um, and this is probably maybe half as much as you would get in the base game or maybe even less, but it's perfectly enough if you're playing two player or a solo game. It also doesn't come with the containers that Stonemeyer gives you with the base game that actually has a lid, but it does give you this little tray, which is made of recyclable material, if that's uh, something that matters to you. And there's only one color of eggs, uh, but the eggs, if you are adding this to your collection, are a different color than everything else. It's this you know kind of Asian burgundy color here. So that's the uh, biggest differences. Also, there's only black and white colors to choose from, but that is because you're either a, you know, the black player gets these black duet tokens and the white player gets these white ones, which when placed together make a beautiful yin yang symbol. Ironically enough, however, there at uh, no point in the game do you ever put them together. They always stay separate like this. Baffling, I know, but, um, Let's talk about now what the biggest uh, change is with the Asia expansion, and that's right here, the duet board. So here is the duet board. Uh, this is if you are playing with two players, you don't have to play with the uh, duet board if you just want to play Wingspan Asia with two players, but this is uh, a nice little change of pace to kind of standard Wingspan. I will note that the back side of this is the traditional round, uh, end of round scoring board, but this is for flock mode. You will notice that there is, um, you know, up to uh, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth place. You know, flock mode can be played with up to seven people. Being that this channel mostly covers solo games, we're not really going to go into flock mode, but if you were for some reason wanting to play Wingspan Asia with a large group of people, it gives you the additional boards, um, a dial to, uh, you're essentially going to be playing two, maybe even four players at the same time to be able to get through a game at a regular pace. You would need the core box and probably some of the other expansions as well. 
to play flock mode. All right, <clears throat> so here is the duet board. Now, the duet board, if you are playing duet mode, has specific end of round goals. You'll notice these kind of have this pink color to them as opposed to the green color. They are double-sided, just like you know standard traditional end of round goals, but you'll notice that each one of them focuses on where, where your duet tokens are on the duet board. So how do you get your duet tokens onto the board here, you ask? Well, anytime you play a card, I mean play a bird card, so that means taking a bird card <coughs> and placing it on your board, on your player board. You get to then choose to place a duet token onto the board, but there are some requirements that you have to follow, some rules. So first of all, whichever habitat that you place your bird in, so if we go back to our purple heron here, he's a water type bird, so he would go into our water habitat. So my duet token has to go somewhere into this blue, one of these blue spaces here. All right, next we need to look at how did we feed this bird to play it? Well, let's say we used a fish to feed it. All right, even though this bird can take up to three different types of food, if we used a fish, we could say, oh, I used a fish, I'm in the water habitat, there you go, I can put my duet token there. But let's say you used a worm instead. Uh, you did not have a fish or a rat, you used a worm. Well, you could go here, but what if your opponent was already there? Well, you're kind of stuck at this point, but there are other options. You could then look at the nest type. What type of nest does this bird have? All right, he's got the, you know, the, the twig nest. Hmm, oh, here's one in the blue that's not already covered up. There we go. All right, but again, let's just continue saying that the opponent is one step ahead of us. Well. You can also look at the wingspan. This is a heron, so it has a large wingspan of 135 centimeters, 50 plus, boom. Or you'll notice that some of them are less than 50. The less than 50s are actually not in the uh, water section because most of the water birds are actually pretty big. Last but not least is the way the bird is facing. Is their beak pointing left or is their beak pointing right? In this case, it's pointing left, so I could also go here. So with every bird that you play, there are several options of where you can place your duet token, but you don't just get to choose. You can't just say, I'm going up here because I want to. Now, you'll notice that some of these spaces have little icons next to them that actually uh, line up with what you get when you activate a particular habitat. So if you activate a water habitat, you're gonna draw cards. So if you happen to play a right-facing bird in a water habitat, and this hasn't been claimed yet, you could place this here and you get to draw a card. It's typical standard rules apply for drawing from the display or from the top of the deck. Or here, if we played here, you would get a egg. Now you have to have a bird to play that egg on. Uh, it has to have the availability for an egg, but you get to egg, you get to play it on a bird. And then up here, you get to take food from the bird feeder. It has to be a die that's in the bird feeder. Same rules apply as if you were activating a uh, woodland uh, location or forest location. And that's pretty much it. So why, you may ask, would it matter that, why would I care about going to, say, these locations that don't give me any bonuses. Well, first of all, we talked about our end of round goals being focused on where our duet tokens are. So this first one is, how many duet tokens do we have in the forest region? Well, right now, white would be winning. <clears throat> and in duet mode, there's only first or second, and second always gets zero points. Remember, this is only for two players. So you're either gonna go up here or down here. If you both are tied, you both get up here. Here we have not on the edge of the map. So that would be all of these interior uh, spaces here. If a space has uh, adjacent to the border in any way, shape or form, it's on the edge. So this is on the edge, this is on the edge, this is on the edge, this is on the edge. These are obvious right here and these are obvious right there. 
but whoever has the most on the interior would win this one. Here we have fewest. This is interesting because it's fewest on bonus spaces. So you actually don't want to, if you look ahead, you don't want to cover up those bonus spaces until after round three, which could be tough. And then last but not least, we have in any one horizontal row. So who has the most in a row? Now, at the end of the game, whoever has the, or not whoever, but you score points based on your longest continuous line that you can connect of duet tokens. So in this example, the black player would be able to go one, two, three. That's a constant line. If he had one over here and you know one over here, he can't get, he can't connect these without hopping. All right, so he would score three points because that's his longest line. And here we would go one, two, three, and we can jump down here then for four. Even if we had one like this, it doesn't look like a line, but you can go one, two, three, down here to four, over here to five. So that would score you five additional points at the end of the game. So all of it, you know, there is a lot of strategy into where you're going to place your duet tokens when you play a bird. If for some reason you cannot place your bird uh, or your duet token here on the board, or you just choose not to, you can always place your duet token here. If you have a duet token here, at a later turn on your game, you may remove said duet token. This will allow you to reset either the bird feeder or the bird tray. So either the food, dice, and or the birds that are on the display. Just a nice little bonus if for some reason you aren't able to play a duet token, it's not wasted, it just goes down there and can be used again at a later turn. Other than that, you know, you end game score, you're gonna add these to your score just like normal, again, if you come in second, you get zero points. And all of these uh, end of round goal tokens in the Asia expansion are focused on the duet mode. So if you wanted to play regular uh, <clears throat> wingspan without the duet, I said earlier you could do it, you almost can't because you don't have end of round goals. All right, so that's duet mode and how to play on the duet board. The other thing I want to discuss in this video that is different is how the AI, how the Automa works in uh, Wingspan Asia. So here is uh, pretty much a setup for the Automa if you are playing in the Wingspan Asia and you're playing in the duet mode. So um, this is important because you need to have the duet mode board and, and all that stuff to make use of, uh, especially this card here. But there's two cards here that are brand new that you, if you haven't played this expansion before, are not going to be familiar with. One of them is going to be your Automa's Cache here. Um, this is going to trigger any time you trigger a power that says, when activated, you do this, all other players do this. Let me find one. Uh, for example, this is an easy one here. This bird here says, when activated, all players lay one egg. So for these birds, normally the Automa wouldn't gain any benefit from those birds because you would just ignore it. Well, they have fixed that problem now. If the Automa is to gain something, you're gonna put two tokens here. They tell you just to use food tokens. It doesn't matter what type of food tokens they are. You could, honestly, I wish they had come up with a dial for this. That would have been super nice. Um, if you have a spare dial, that would work the best because you're really just counting up to a certain number. But for example, this green pheasant here where all players just gain something for free, the Automa would gain two cache tokens here. Again, two food tokens of any type, doesn't matter. If, however, the Automa has to pay something, let me see, um, here's one. The Sri Lanka frog mouth here. It says when activated, uh, roll one die blah 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 all this matter all players may discard one from their hand to gain one from the supply so again here is all players again but they have to discard something they have to give up something well it wouldn't be fair that the automa just gains that thing for free so in this case they only gain one cachet token okay this is explained well enough in the rule book um, but hopefully that covered it for you so anytime the automa should gain something based on your cards 
you're either gonna give it two if it's just a straight free thing, or if the automo should have given up something, an egg or a card out of hand, you're only gonna give it one. At the end of the game, depending on your you know, difficulty level, you're going to count up um, how many are here and divide you know, usually by like five. So for every five tokens here, that's uh, say another egg that they tell you to put down and the eggs are worth one point at the end of the game. So this is not pure points, um, but it is gonna be points at the end of the game for the Automa. <clears throat> the other big thing here is the uh, round duet map tracker. It's kind of a mouthful. Um, and at first glance, this card is very tricky. There's a lot of symbols on here, a lot of iconography, but we're gonna go through it step by step. So when they tell you to set up, they tell you to place your traditional one here, and then they tell you to place your um, your duet map tracker one here, butt up next to it, because that way when you flip this card over, you'll see that it covers up the middle which is the, the middle two parts, which you don't want to see. You're only focused really on it pointing to round one and then what's on the edge here. Then there's two other important cards here. These are your reference cards for uh, the AI. You'll notice at the bottom here that this side on each one says duet mode automa actions. And this side says automa actions. So if you're just playing standard against a standard Automa, you want to make sure you have these. If not, have these up because this down here is very important until you get used to playing the game. So what do what does that show you, tell you? Well, it tells you there's two times that the Automa plays a bird card. One is where it just simply takes the top card of the draw pile, plays it face down, you don't know what kind of bird it is, it doesn't matter. The other type is where they actually look to what their uh, scoring criteria, what their objective is. They take a bird like that and then they add it to their hand. So those are the two types. You're either gonna have the take a bird face down card or take play a bird action that looks like this. Let's go over the uh, this type first. I know we're in round one, but let's just, for example, imagine this was round three, or this symbol was up here. In this case, the Automa is going to take its action just like it normally would. It's going to look to see if it can score a card based on its objective. It's going to take that card, the highest scoring one, add it to its hand. Normally, in normal Automa, it would have, you know, in this case, in round one, it would have placed one of its player tokens onto that end round uh, scoring goal and it maybe would have taken it away, it would have gone back and forth. It doesn't do any of that anymore. It does, however, place duet tokens, okay? So, if it, it gets this action here with the bird on it, it's going to look, let me get my duet board here, it's going to look then, uh, so depending on the round, where is the map uh, icon? So you can see the map here. It's gonna say, all right, what symbol is right here? This one happens to be a cube with the X through it. So in this instance, we're gonna start in the lower right-hand corner with the duet token. So we would kind of start down here in placing it. Then when it's this bird symbol, you are going to use what the uh, end of round scoring goal is. So in this one, it would say in any one horizontal row. So let's just say, for example, that it had some like this. Well, it wants to put, it wants to add this one to a horizontal row that's already there. So it's gonna go tick, 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 tick. Oh, look at that. Bing, it is in a row with another duet token. It's working towards this objective down here. <clears throat> it will stop there. If it had, say, started in the upper left, it would have gone this way, this way, this way, and stopped right there. Let's just say, for example, that it was, that this was the objective token, most in uh, the forest region. So it would have started way down here, and it would have kept crossing right to left until, ta-da, it hit in a forest region. And that's where it would have placed. It doesn't matter 
what type of bird it played, um, what type of bird it got from the bird feeder. None of that matters. It just matters. It focuses on these scoring tokens. So that's for when you see the bird. When you have the down, uh, face down, just take a card from the top of the pile action, you're gonna go through a couple more steps. You're still gonna look here. So in this case, we're still starting in the lower left-hand corner. And then you're gonna go down here and you can see these tiny little symbols right here next to the, this first one. Both of these actions, you're gonna look to this map. After that, you're only looking to these two for this action here. So in this case, we still have another cube with an X through it. So we're looking, there's a little star here. That means nest. What nest type? Uh, or we're looking for a nest type. And then last but not least, there is a block with no X through it. So we're looking for a forest. So again, we would start down here and we're looking for the first uh, forest space we hit with a nest icon in it. We're gonna go bing, 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 bing. We're not gonna start stop here because that's food. So we're gonna go up here, bing. Oh, there is a nest type in the forest. That's where we would stop. Let's look at a uh, different card. <clears throat> here we go. Let's uh, let's just pretend that this symbol is at top here. So we look here. There is nothing here. It's blank. All right. So we're going to start in the lower left. All right. All pink powers activate. Well, down here, blank or all pink powers would look for right or left facing and or wingspan. And then down here, it's a block. So we're looking in the forest region. So lower left, looking for wingspan or beak face in the forest region. <coughs> we would start here and then we just keep going bing, 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 bing. We would skip over this because that's a food type. Bing, 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 bing. And there we go. Facing left bird in the forest. We got it. All right. Again, it does not matter what type of bird the Automa gets into their hand or into their scoring area. It doesn't matter whether it's um, you know, in a specific habitat or not. All that matters is what action triggered this because it has two different types of play a bird action. And then you look to these icons from there. So if, uh, for example, let's just look at this a little more closely here. Uh, you can see in this case, if it was a cube with no X, we would have been looking for food. Cube with X, we would have been looking for a nest. We already talked about that one. And then here is just the three different habitats. And here you can see the four corners of where you start moving the duet token from. This then rotates every time you refresh around. So round two, you would flip like this. Now it's pointing here. You'll notice that the map now is up here. So even though round two's action takes place down here, if you had a card like this that's going to do as your card draw, you look up here. So you don't ever look at what uh, round you're in, what action you just took. You always look at this space here next to the icons that you're following. So. Here would be blank, here would be pink powers, here would be cube taking you to water habitat. Again, this is all explained in the rule book. These also help, um, once you get going, it's very quick to just glance here and be like, ooh, pink powers, uh, I'm going, here is blank, I'm going upper left, I'm looking for nest and in the wetlands. And so you would start here and you just go boom, boom, nest in the wetlands. It's very fast. Uh, I feel like this also plays out better because I can, I can actually strategically block the AI or get to places, try and get to places before they might play. Whereas formerly they would just be placing cubes on that objective and taking it off at random. There is still a lot of randomness to how they play. Um, at the end of the day, things like ones in horizontal don't always work out for them or the how many points they get for the longest chain, but sometimes it could surprise you but I actually do appreciate how this uh, the Automa scores on its objectives in duet mode versus the standard mode 
And that is going to do it for my overview of the Wingspan Asia expansion slash standalone game. Uh, again, this was not supposed to be an overview of how to play Wingspan. This was just meant to show you what the differences were between this and base game Wingspan, as well as cover the two new big things, Duet Mode and the Automa that's included in Wingspan Asia. A few things that are also in the box that I didn't cover earlier. There is your standard rule book here, which has all of the rules for playing Wingspan. So if this is the only version of Wingspan you own, here are the rules. There's a separate Automa rule book that covers everything from base Automa to duet mode Automa. There's a nice appendix that covers all of your questions about cards. There's also a swift start pack. So if you don't shuffle up the cards and you open them right up, and it tells you how to reset it if you happened to uh, do that, but it basically tells you which cards to play out of your hand. It walks you step by step through the first, I think it's four turns. Um, very handy for, I don't know, yeah, first walks you through the first four turns and then turn five they let you loose. But very handy for people who are a little timid about learning how to play, but want to dive in. Uh, there's also this big fancy first player token here and this flock mode board here I briefly discussed earlier but essentially if you're playing say with six players you're going to uh, assign everybody a color and red and yellow will go at the same time purple and green uh, the green player is considered the first player if there needs to be a tiebreaker or if you flip this over you can actually play up to seven players in this case uh, players number one and three and two and four all go I believe again I have not read through the rules of this because I don't ever plan on playing wingspan with seven players um, but yeah there you go that basically is everything that comes in the box with wingspan Asia there's a whole nother boards so there's two boards enough tokens to play two player and all this additional stuff to play six and seven players if you have the base game that's going to do it for this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. Once again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.